Shalom, peace, love, and blessings to all the chosen family around the world. I want to let you know something right now that their smear campaigns, okay, the the gang stalkers, they all came together to smear your name. It's backfired on them and they failed. Oh my God, I'm going to say that again. The plan to destroy your reputation has failed. Oh my goodness gracious. Come on, let me get an amen. Yes, it was a plan. It was a plot from the very beginning to all come together as one and to destroy you and to uh, destroy your finances and to uh, destroy opportunities for you and to uh, make you lose money. Some of you lost your job. Yeah, I'm going to say that again. Some of you lost your job because they smeared your name. If they smeared your name, hit that like button right now. Let me get an amen. Glory be to God. God bless you, Queen Butterfly. Listen, God bless you, King Jesus. God bless all my sisters. God bless you, Alan. I'm sending love your way. They smeared your name. Oh my God, I'm going to say that again. They lied on you. A lie can destroy millions of opportunities for your life. A lie can destroy relationships. A lie can destroy opportunities. A lie can destroy your job. A lie can make you lose money. But something I want you to know is that God is rebuilding you. Put down God's rebuilt me. What's up, Anderson? Put down, God is rebuilding me right now. Put that down there right now. And I want you to know something. God's rebuilding you for the better. God bless you, Siobhan. Listen, by the time God get done with you, you're going to see something right now. The tables is going to turn. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. And you're about to be first. Put down, I'm in first place. Yeah. See, they failed. And I want you to understand this. The enemies join hand in hand to do this. It wasn't just one person. <laughs> it was many of them. But something that I want you to know is God will leave 99 of wicked enemies behind for you. It's powerful. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. God will leave 99 behind for you. Yeah. Yeah. See, everybody thought it was a great idea to do this. And nobody thought that there would be repercussions for how they treated you. And God said, because they treated you this way, I'm going to rebuild you and I'm going to vindicate you. God's going to clear your name. Put that down there right now. Come on now. Oh, glory be to God. Yeah. Yeah. See, some of you lost everything. But something that's so important about life is that. Your reputation, your character, your name is so valuable. Oh, my goodness gracious. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say that again. Listen, let me tell you something right now. They can take your money away. They can take your cars away. They can take your home away. But let me tell you something about your name. Your name is more valuable than any of that. Let me get amen. Oh, the name. That God has given you from birth must be defended. And you stepped away. Let me tell you what you did. Let me tell you what you did. Let me tell you why God is going to bless you and tear all your enemies down. Listen, according to Romans 12, 17, this is what you did. It says this. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. See, you could have fought back. You could have put it all in your hands. Huh. You could have done evil for evil. You could have lied on people like they lied on you. 
No. You did it the righteous way. <laughs> Why? Because you were always a bigger person, a much wiser person, a smarter person. Oh, my goodness gracious. Than those people who've done evil to you. See, you even pray for people who wanted to see you lose. Oh, that's powerful. Oh, that's powerful. <laughs> you reached out for support. You reached out for help to people who wanted to slaughter you and see your business fail. Come on, let me get an amen. See, and when you can live like that, God says, I'm going to use this person. I'm going to rebuild them. Why? Because when they got slandered, they didn't do like the heathen. They didn't do like the enemy. When they got slandered and talked about, they prayed to me. Put down, I prayed to God. Put that down there right now. What's up, Ryan? Come on now. I'm going in on this enemy. Huh. When they wanted to see you delayed, you prayed. <laughs> When they wanted to see you fail with no money, you still praise God. See, you show God something that Job showed God. See, no matter what Job went through, he was still a faithful servant. And by you doing this, Romans 12, 17, do not repay evil, anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine, <coughs> it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Come on, let me get in there. God said, I will repay. Not I might, not maybe. He said, I will. So the repayment, we're going to talk about that. All right. Because here's the thing. They did this all without cause. You did nothing wrong to them. And they did this to you. They judged you. How many of you have been judged for no reason? Come on now. Come on now. How many of them prejudged you? Come on. How many people who didn't even know you judged you? How many of them talked about you and lied on you for gossip and selfish pleasure? Come on now. Oh, everybody had your name in their mouth. Though they thought it was funny. God said it's not funny at all. Oh, my God. It's not funny to be talked about and ridiculed and lied on and smeared. That ain't funny. It's not funny to have your reputation smeared and talked about where you can't even find a job. Some of you couldn't even find a job, but God found a way. If God made a way, hit that like button right now. Oh, they did this to you intentionally. Some of them didn't want you to have money to take care of your kids. Some of you were behind on bills and they didn't care nothing about that. They wanted you to suffer with no finances. How many family members smeared your name? And tried to destroy your reputation to other family members. Oh my goodness gracious. How many of them talked about you outside of the circle, outside of friendship? They were supposed to be friends with you, but they talked about you and lied on you and smeared your name. How many of them was in the dark doing this to you? How many people on your job did this to you? This is real. See, you walk with a light that they can't stand. But through it all. God's going to rebuild you. This is good news. This video here is good news. I've had people try to smear my name 
before I started this ministry. Hmm. And even in this ministry, I've had people try to smear my name even in this ministry. Let me get an amen. Come on now. See, but something that I notice about God huh, is that though we want to stand up and fight the battle, God said this, put it in my hands. Put that down there right now, Joseph family. Yeah. See, here's the thing. When someone already got their mind made up about you, you can't convince people anything different. The only thing that's going to change the story, the only person that's going to change the story is God. God bless you, Rose. Listen, 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 listen. I'm going to say that again. When people have made up in their mind the stories, the lies about you, listen, you want to, I listen, it's, 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 it's how you want to defend yourself. Amen. But God is telling me to tell you today, don't say another word. Oh my God. Somebody put down in the comment section below. Be still. Somebody put that down there right now. Be still. Somebody put that down. Don't say another word. Oh my God. This is powerful. God said, you don't got to defend your name again. God said, be still. Wait on me. Wait on the Lord. Oh my God. This is powerful. He said, make me your habitation. That's what God's telling me to tell you. Be still. Because when you do this, let's go to Psalms 91. Oh, my God. This is powerful. The Holy Ghost just came over my body. Glory be to God. Wow. God said, be still. God said, be still. He's working out something for you right now. He's going to shut the mouths up of the enemies that's trying to talk against you. God said, but you got to be still. You got to be obedient to what I want you to do. Because if you try to do anything different, you're going outside of the plan or how I want you to operate. I want you to be still because when I repay judgment against the enemy, I'm going to do it 10 times better. I'm going to do it 100 times better. I'm going to do it 1,000 times better. God said, be still. Be still. It says this, he that dwells. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou thus, so thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold, see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, the habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Let me get amen. See, God said, I'll get them back. And God said, if you be obedient to what I'm telling you to do, if you be obedient to me, you're going to see a thousand fall at your right and, and uh, you're going to see 10,000 fall at your right and a thousand fall at your left. But God is telling you this. This is so important. God said, only with thy eyes shall thou behold, see the reward of the wicked. Because thou, here's the important part. Because thou has made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. What does that mean? That means this. You've been sheltered by God. When you make God your habitation, that means that you're seeking help. Not you're doing the fighting. You're seeking God to fight the battle for you. When you seek habitation from God, God will fight the battle for you. Come on, let me get an amen. God bless you, Stacy. God bless everybody that's in this chat. I'm talking about smear campaigns. I'm talking about reputations that's been damaged. My reputation, they tried to damage my reputation outside of this ministry. And the enemy worked upon people's spirits to damage my reputation in this ministry. That's why I'm talking about this today. So I know if the devil came after me, the devil came after you. But I'm here to tell you right now, I don't want you to say another word to the enemy. You don't got to defend your name because God is going to speak for you. Let me show you how God's going to do it for you. Let's go to Matthew. See, sometimes 
in life and we're human. We want to defend our name. And it's so important to clear all lies and rumors from these naysayers and these slanderers and these swindlers. I, I call them, I call them Judases who want to knock down your reputation because they know they can't defeat you with the combat that God has equipped you with. So what they try to do is get other people to build up and stand up against you. Amen. Amen. They know they can't take you out the game by their self. They're cowards. So they got to run to other people to gang up against you. What is that saying? That's saying that you're a powerful person. If you got to get so many people to come against you, I want you to think about this chosen family. Listen, if they can't do it alone and do it by themselves and they need a thousand people to speak against you, what does that say about you? Somebody put down in the comment section below, I carry the light. Put that down right now. Oh my God. What light do you carry? You carry God with you. See, see, let me tell you something about this light. This light will tell the enemy that they're at a disadvantage. Oh my God. That's powerful. Ha! Think about it. Think about Christ. Christ was there by itself. Just a few disciples. The Pharisees had hundreds of them going against Christ. What, what was it about Christ that put fear in them? It was the light that Christ carried. It was the light that Christ walked with. Amen. Come on now. It's the light that you carry. Oh my goodness gracious, that's powerful. The Holy Spirit that you carry. See, that's why they're called gang stalkers. Amen. They feel that they're at a disadvantage. So gotta, they got to gang up on you, multiple people. I got a scripture for that as well. But I'm here, I'm here to tell you right now. I'm going to expose this for you right now. It says this. This is a Luke. Let's go here. Let's go to Luke 15. 15, 1. See? I'm going to talk about these gang of people that has done this to you. I'm going to show you something right now. What's going to happen? Yeah, yeah, to this 99. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. To the 99 sheep. Amen. That spoke wickedness. That spoke wickedness against you. To the 99 sheep that spoke poverty over your life. Here's what's coming. It says this. Then drew near unto him all publication and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spoke this parable unto them, saying, So I'm going to stop right there. The Pharisees. Have the same spirit as your enemies today. Oh my God. Oh my goodness gracious. Thank you so much, Rose, for, for pouring in the ministry. You said this, uh, Rose, listen, and listen, it's so nice to see you again, my sister. Listen, you said this, God takes care of them and all better than we can. Our job is to keep our hearts for him and not hold on to resentment, anger, or pain. Focus harder. Amen, my sister. It's so nice to see you. Glory be to God. Let's get amen for my sister Rose. Come on now. Come on now. And we're not worried about these wicked enemies out here. We're not worried about these wicked enemies out here that's evil. Matter of fact, let me get you up out of here because I will not let you disrespect my chosen family on this channel. Look at that. The enemy spirit is working. Somebody put down in the comment section below, the devil's been deleted. Put that down there right now. You're a wicked enemy. Come on now. Look at that. Evil spirits. One thing I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to talk to my sister like that. And you're not going to talk to my brothers like that. Not on this channel. You don't know my sister. You don't know her life and you don't know her walk. And I'm not going to let you sit here and disrespect any of my chosen family. Let me tell you this chosen family. Listen. So. Today, just like that enemy that was just there, got the Pharisee spirit. Accusing. Amen. The spirit, just like Satan, always trying to find fault in someone, always trying to accuse someone, watching people to find fault. See, it's so amazing. Shout out to Shay Love. When you watch people to find a mistake, amen, you miss the message. I'm going to say it again. When you're watching people to find a mistake, 
You missed the message right here in this scripture. The Pharisees missed the message. Pay attention. They were watching Christ to see fault in Christ and they missed the message. Let's keep going. Watch this. It says this. And what man of you having a hundred sheep? If he lose one of them, do not <coughs> do not leave the ninety nine. In the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he had found it, he lay it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven, one over one sinner that repenteth more than over 99 just persons which have no repentance. Let me get amen. God left the 99 behind for you. I'm going to say it again. That's why they're mad at you, my chosen sisters and brothers. God left the 99 wicked sheep behind for you. God left 99 gang stalkers behind for you. God left 99 monitoring spirits behind for you. That's the truth. Rejoice. This is a happy moment. Come on now. Come on now. Think about how special you are. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Think about how special you are, chosen family. When God, when God can leave 99 behind for one. It's powerful. It says a lot about you and your obedience and you're willing, uh, you willing to repent of your sins and you've been obedient to God's word. You have pleased God in so many ways to where God said, I don't care if it's 10,000 people that speak against your name. I don't care if it's a million people that speak against you. As long as I speak good for you. Oh my God, pay attention to this. Understand that the 99 was jealous. Notice inside the scripture right here that none of those sheep, none of those 99 sheep called out to the master. <laughs> let me let me take you there, chosen family. I'm going to say that again. None of the, none of the, listen, listen, none of the 99 sheep, all right, made a loud noise to get the master's attention to let them know that one of them was lost. Oh my God, this is powerful. That's what they did to you. Listen, when you had a shortcoming, they laughed at you. None of them came together and said, listen, let me, let me lift this sister up and let me lift this brother up. Come on now. Come on now. But God said, let me look into the herd. Amen. Let me look out there. See, I'm going to look past the 99 wicked. And I'm going to look for just one, one righteous one. Amen. I don't care nothing about what these sheep got going on. I'm looking for the one that's righteous, the one that's going to be obedient. I'm looking for the David in the group. <coughs> Come on. Forget the 99 Saul's. Get them out the way. Give me David. Put David there. Give me Christ. Put down the righteous people. That's who God is looking is looking for and God is looking for you. Amen. So it was without cause. That's the point. When you do something that's without cause, God will give you justice. Put down justice right now. Put down justice in the chat. Put that down right now. God's gonna give you justice. You're going to see the tables turn. Oh my God, I'm going to say it again. You're going to see the tables turn. The table is going to turn on the people that wanted you at the bottom. The people who was at the top is going to be brought down. And you're going to be brought to the top. Because when you gain a reward through sin, let me tell you something right now. Let me break this scripture down. Let me break this down for you. Let me show you this. See, let me go to the scripture real quick. Let me go here. Let 
I'm going to show you what's going to happen. Yeah. Let me show you. Bear with me, chosen family. Let me go here. Let's go to let's see, 1022. Let's see here. Something just came to my spirit um, that I want to expose to you. All right. About how people have benefited off um, slandering your name in these smear campaigns, how they actually got into position. Amen. Come on now. Come on now. Listen, this is what ended up happening with your enemies. Amen. Let me go here. Let's see. Okay, so this is, let's go to, yeah, that's that's the scripture. Let's go to um, Proverbs 13, 11. Let's go there. <clears throat> Proverbs 13, 11. It says this, speaking of people benefiting off of your downfall, this is what I want you to understand. Peace in uh, Christ Church. Thank you for uh, uh, peace in Christ Jesus. Thank you for pouring in the ministry. This is what I want you to know. For the people that's benefited off your downfall, watch this. Here's the powerful word for you. It says this. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. Come on now. You put the work in. Oh my God, I'm going to say it again. You put the work in. You've been laboring for God. You've been putting the work in for God. They got their wealth by slandering you. Some people got in position on the nine to five by slandering your name, by getting you fired from the job. The Bible says this, if you do that to get in position, this is what the Bible says. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. You're going to increase. They thought it was funny. By getting wealth, by tearing you down and smearing your name. So, <laughs> glory be to God. Some of these people sabotage you. You were at places of auditions. Some of these people gave the spot, your spot, to their cousins. Some of them gave your spot to their brothers. Some of, some of these people gave your spot to their friends. Some of, these, some of these people gave your job to their friends. And what they didn't understand is you needed the finances. Oh, my goodness gracious, that's powerful. <laughs> Not what they didn't understand. They didn't care. Amen. You needed the money and finances to feed your family. They didn't care about your life circumstances. Some of them on purpose gave up your position. Some of these people right now are sitting in your position. Put down in the comment section below. I'm coming for my position. Put that down there right now. Amen. Yeah, that's why the scripture said this wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gather by labor shall increase. And you're going to increase. Amen. Listen, 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 I'm going to say this again. Listen, you're going to increase. God is going to increase you more. See, we're going to talk about the reward from God. Before I go to the rewards from God, I need to go to Psalms 35 and show you this real quick. Because I need you to understand something. Psalms 35, we're going to start at. Five, it says this, let them be a shaft before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them and let their way be dark and slippery. 
and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. For without cause have they hid from me the net, their uh, net in a pit, which with without cause they have digged for my soul. I'm going to stop right there. That's it. That's it right there. Before we talk about the without cause, put down is a spiritual battle. Put that down right now, chosen family. Put down is a spiritual battle. Put that down right now. See, people <coughs> attacked you be <coughs> because this. They thought that you were going to do anything. But what happens in the spiritual realm when your angels are fighting the battle for you and hunting them down? Put down this hunting season. Come on. See, something that people don't know and recognize, when you're connected to God, God puts angels to fight the enemy in the spiritual realm. The same way they tried to drive you crazy and confuse your mind and your steps, the righteous have angels that will confuse and confound the enemy. I'm going to prove that to you. If we go up to four, it says this, let them be confounded and put to shame. That seek after that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion. That divides my hurt. They devise your hurt. There was a lot of people that's devise your hurt. Amen. I, listen, a lot of people wanted to see you hurt, but God said this: For without cause have they hid for me their net in a pit. Which without cause have they dig for my soul. Let destruction come upon them at unaware. It's going to happen when the enemy's not aware. Oh, that's powerful. <laughs> come on. I'm going to say that again. It's going to happen when they're not aware. See, let me tell you, let me tell you something about return to the sender in karma. Let me tell you something about that. There's no expiration date. Yeah, I know. Some people say, well, I did that to him five years ago. Ten years ago, I did that to him. Yeah, you did. But you never repented. And when you don't support people and you treat people wrong, God has a way of swinging karma back on your enemies. There's no expiration date on return to the sender. Oh my God, I'm going to say that again. Put that down there right now, Chosen Family. Put down there's no expiration date. There's not. Come on. I don't care how long they wronged you. I don't care if it's been 20 years. You have to repent for what you've done. You got to repent to God and say, God, I was wrong for smearing their name. God, I was wrong for getting them fired from their job. God, I was wrong. Until then, you're marked just like Cain. I'm going to say that again. You're marked just like Cain. Let's go to Galatians 6, 7. Let's go there. Let's go there. 
Oh, and by the way, too, before I go there, it says this, let destruction come upon him at unaware. So when the destruction come, you're not going to be aware of when it's coming and the time that it's coming because it don't have an expiration date on there. Okay. So this is what's going to happen. It says this, and let their net that they have hid catch himself into the very destruction, let them fall. So whatever you put out there, whatever that net was, whether it was a smear campaign, whether it was a physical net, some of them tried to physically put you into a chains. Come on now. Whatever it was, the hidden things that you've done will come back on you. Amen. Let's go here. See. A lot of people thought that they can mock God. A lot of them thought that they can mock the Most High. It says this, be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You sold out lies. You soweth out lies. And deceit. What makes you think in your mind that that's not going to come back to you? Amen. You've hurt my chosen family in different ways. So many different wicked ways. And the problem is you sit around like good is going to come back to you. God is not mocked. You're trying to mock God and deceive yourself. See, the reason my chosen family here got blessings on top of blessings and righteous blessings coming back to them is because they were amazing to people. They put out good in the world. They took your slander. They took the Knife that you stuck in their back. And they kept walking. Until God saw them and saw that they were wounded. And God took the knife out of our back. And healed up our wounds. Somebody put down in the comment section below. God is healing me. Put that down there right now. I'm talking about physical wounds. I'm talking about emotional wounds. I'm talking about financial wounds. I'm talking about all kinds of wounds. God has stood on your behalf and he's healing you up. Some of these enemies have damaged your finances. Some of them have damaged you so bad to where you have been rebuilding for years and years. But God's healing you. Amen. This is what I want you to know, chosen family. You got a reward coming to you. Got a reward coming to you. Amen. Let's go there. And I want you to notice as well, you didn't deserve what they did to you, but your suffering that you face, chosen family, let me tell you this, it was without cause. You've done nothing wrong to anyone to deserve what you got. You have been an amazing person. And let's listen, continue to be you. The plan is to change you. That's it. The plan was to make you bitter. The plan was to take that smile away. The plan was to disturb your, your peace. I want you to continue to shine your light. 
God now has made what they did to you reverse. And it's happening to them. I want you to know that it's okay to smile. Oh my God, I'm going to say that again. It's okay to smile. Listen to me, my sisters, my, my brothers. It's okay. Because the battle is already won. I'm going to say that again. The battle is already won. Think about it. By you surviving, God has showed each and every one of them that teamed up against you, that he loves and favors you more than thousands or hundreds or whatever it is of the people that spoke against you. You won the battle because you got God. Come on now. <laughs> That's the proof. That's the proof right there. The proof that God said that you won the battle, y'all, is your survival. You survive the slander and the smear campaigns. It didn't work. That's the truth, y'all. See, you just walking around. Oh, my God. Don't expect them to celebrate you. Don't expect them to clap for you. I love you too, my chosen sisters and chosen brothers. Don't expect them to throw a party for you. Oh my God, they wanted to see you die. Oh! One thing I learned is when I broke free from the enemy and God put me in a race for this ministry. As I entered into my winning season with the Most High God, God said, don't look back. <laughs> this is powerful. I reached different levels on top of levels. And God said, listen, it's just me and you in this race. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. See, what I learned in life is sometimes you got to celebrate yourself. Come on, put that down there right now. You got to celebrate yourself. You got to celebrate your life because you can't expect people who wanted you to die in a battle to celebrate you. You got to learn how to celebrate you. You got to learn how to be happy for you. You got to learn how to do for you because you are the only one who's going to do good by you. Let me get an amen. The race that you're in, it's going to come a time if you're in a fire right now. Or in a pit where God is going to take you out of that pit. And God is testing you. God is trying to see, are you seeking validation from man or do you want me to validate you? God is testing you. If you turn back around and go say, hey, auntie, hey, uncle, hey, friend from back in high school. Hey, this person, why aren't you celebrate me? You are slapping God in the face. Let me get an amen. Come on now, because that auntie or that uncle or that person from high school, they didn't help pull you out the battle. They didn't help reach you up. They didn't lift you up. It was God. Put down it was God in the chat right now. Put that down there right now. Come on. Let's tell the truth. It was God. It was God. It was God. The reason you can survive is because it was God. How dare you turn around and look back? What's behind you? It's nothing back there for you. God said you got to keep moving forward because what I got for you is treasure. It's more blessings. It's in front of you and not behind you. How are you supposed to get to your treasure if you're walking backwards? You got to walk forward. Meaning you got new people you got to meet. New opportunities, new blessings, new finances, new business deals. God got something for you, and it's not behind you. Tell the devil I'm not my past. Put that down there right now. What you're going to see 
as you're in this race is people are going to try to remind you of your past. Why? It's a tactic from the enemy. See, some of you with your past that you got, don't be ashamed if you got a bad past. Don't you be ashamed of your past. Let me tell you something right now. But one thing, even though we're not ashamed of our past, we're not going to let them remind us, us of who we used to be. Why? Because it's a tactic from the enemy. It's about power. It's about control. This new you, this new person that God has created according to 2 Corinthians. Let's go there. Let's go there. I'm going to tell you something about the plot that I had to learn. And I'm just giving this to you, chosen family. Listen, there's jealousy and jokes. Don't let them joke on you. Don't let them joke around with your new beginnings. Don't let them joke around with your new levels. Don't let them play with your name. Put down in the comment section below. Put some respect on my name. Don't let these people out here disrespect you right now in your season. I'm telling you right now, we're not going to accept no more disrespect from a hater. We're going to leave the haters in the past, and we're not going to listen to these haters. But on top of that, you're going to put some respect on the name. Because when God get done cleaning you up, every room that you walk into, they're going to say, Mr. Crystal Life Coach. Come on, let me get an amen. Oh, my God, the servant of the Most High. Not the person who I used to be back in the day. Because all things are going away. Come on now. And all things are new. Let me get an amen. You're going to put some respect. On the chosen family's name, God's going to make them do it. They're not going to like it. The vindication is going to make them do it. Some of you used to live in a place of poverty. God's going to elevate you. He's going to level you up. He's going to put you in a new address. They're going to have to look you up. I'm going to say that again. You're not going to be able to be accessed by people in your past. They're going to have to look you up. That old phone number is going to be gone because old things are passed away. All things are new. The people are just mad and angry because your past is where they can control you at and hold you at. See, that's what they tried to do to Jesus Christ. Amen. When Jesus walked up on the scene to do miracles and perform miracles back in his old hometown, they could not accept the fact that Christ was anointed. They could not accept the fact that Christ was appointed. So what did they do? They tried to remind Christ of his past. They said, hey, ain't that the carpenter's son? Amen. Isn't that the carpenter's son tried to remind him of his past saying, in other words, they're saying he's just a carpenter. How does he have these abilities and capabilities? How is it possible to, for Christ to be able to perform in these miracles? Put down in the comment section below, all things are possible with God. Let me get an amen. See, the impossible is in your enemy's mind. The impossible was in the past. Now that you got God, everything is possible. All things are possible. And that's what they didn't understand about Christ. They wanted to remind Christ of his past, of how he used to be a carpenter. Amen. Just to lower his his uh, his standards down. OK, just to diminish his self-esteem. Some people will say jokes and things because they want to knock your self-esteem down. They want to destroy your confidence. OK, so somebody put down in the comment section below. I'm confident. Put that down right now. Let me tell you something about that confidence that you carry. That confidence that you carry make the enemy want to bury you. Come on. Come on. And the truth is, it didn't matter if you didn't have a lot of money. It didn't matter if you had a little bit of money. You still walk with confidence. Because being confident, I mean, being confident, right? It creates your character. The confidence of David, of knowing that you can step up and win the battle. I need you to understand something. Let me go here. Let's go here real quick. Let me go here real quick. Let's talk about this. Let's go to 2 Corinthians uh, 4. I mean, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Things are new in your life. They're not old anymore. So if God told you this, chosen family, I want you to really listen to this. If God said old things are passed away, behold, all things are new. If anybody tries to remind you of the old things without acknowledging the new things, they're an enemy. How could you come to me? And bypass the amazing gifts that God is doing with my life 
pretend like th these things don't exist. But you want to talk about something that happened 15 years ago. You're a devil. Let me get amen. man. It's a tactic. It's a trick. It's a setup. To gain power over you. And authority. Because your past, they might have had some type of power over you. But if they did, tell the devil you're a liar. Tell the devil you have no power over me. Tell the devil I am not my past. Tell the devil stop bringing up my past in my present while I'm working on my future. Let me get an amen. Stop bringing up my past in my present while I'm working on my future. Tell the devil that. Come on out. You got a lot of people that's like that. Come on. They become blind when it comes down to seeing what God is doing in your life, but they can somehow see what you used to do 10 or 20 years ago. How many people is like that right now? Come on, give God a praise. It's powerful. You're resilient. You're confident. That's how you were able to defeat. Everybody who was a part of this smear campaign. I'm going to read this scripture for you just to give you an idea of how you are. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 4, 8. It says this. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast, cast down. But not, but not destroyed. Always bearing about the body and the dying of the Lord Christ, that the life also of Christ might be made manifest in our body. For which we which for for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. That's why you're going through it. That's why you're going through it. Amen. That's why you're going through. You're going through everything you're going through right now. OK, for Christ's sake. Amen. You're enduring everything. The battles for Christ's sake, because they couldn't stand Christ. They couldn't stand God. That's why they can't stand you. Amen. I tell you this all the time. These people want to give God an eviction notice out of your life. All right. And your family, they can't evict God out your life. Let me tell you something right now. Let me tell you the truth. Everybody want to evict God out of your life. You want to know why? The reason why if they can evict God and take God out of your life, they can destroy you. If they can say, God, get up out of here, you got to the end of the month to get up out of Christian life, coach life. They will prepare a plan to attack you on that final day of the month. I'm telling you the truth, chosen family. I know what I'm talking about. You got family that said, I'm not going to invite you to the picnic. I'm not going to invite you to the barbecue because you keep God everywhere you go. They want God to disappear out your life. Put down in the comment section below, I will keep God in my life. Put that down there right now. Come on. See, the people know this. That's why they watch you 24-7. Monitoring spirits are watching you 24-7. You want to listen, listen, listen. They're watching you for so many different reasons, chosen family, but I'm telling you right now, some people are watching you to see if you fell back into your old ways. Some people are watching you to see if you fell back into sin. Come on now. Come on now. I'm going to say that again. Some people are watching you very close. They're not watching you because they want to see you elevate. They're not watching because they want to see you prosper. They're watching you to see if you fell off. Some people are watching and peeping just to see if you fell back into those old ways with Jack down the block. They want to see if you went to Jack in the box and you got some Jack Daniels in your hand. So come on, give God a praise. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Come on now. They're watching you. Because if they see you fall back in sin, the truth about the world and the truth about people is people are in sin. So they're comfortable with sin. So it makes them uncomfortable seeing you walk righteous. It makes them uncomfortable seeing you walk upright. It makes them uncomfortable seeing you walk strong. It makes them uncomfortable seeing you with this strong relationship and holding on to God. But somebody put down in the comment section below, you don't know what I know. Put that down there right now. Put down, you don't know what I've been through. Come on now, put down, you don't know what God has done for me. Put that down there right now. Put down, I won't turn my back on God. Oh my God, that's powerful.
That's why they're watching you. Understand this. To be accepted by the world means this. You threw away God. I'm going to say it again. If, if the world accepts you, that means that you're against what God is trying to teach you and try to show you. God is not of the world. It's separate. It's different. You're different. It's a different walk. Christ's walk is different. Walking like God, walking like Christ means that you got to walk alone sometimes. Everybody is not there for you, but I want you to know something right now. The, the trials that you're facing, it's going to actually um, show you exactly who's trying to destroy you. Your trials is going to show you who you need to remove out of your life. Because I want you to understand something right now. After the trials are up and after God banded you up and put you in position, those people are going to circle back around. Oh my God, I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say that again. After God builds you back up, the people that's abused you is going to try to circle back around. You're going to have family who's cast you out, who said you're the black sheep, who don't want nothing to do with you, coming around with their hands stuck out, asking you for finances. Let me get an amen. Let me tell you something right now. We're different. Amen. See, you're not fooling us. And you're, you're not fooling God. You're fooling yourself. You're fooling yourself. The way that you treated the chosen family out here, the way that you have done these things to us, I'm telling you right now, you have fooled yourself. You have done some things. God bless everybody in the chat. I see y'all showing love. I'm sending love to everybody out here. I'm sending love your way. I'm telling you right now, they have fooled yourself. How? Because in the end, you're going to be on top. I don't care. I listen, listen, let me tell you something right now. I, I know this for a fact, y'all. Chosen family, I'm getting the Holy Ghost just saying this. Oh my God, glory be to God. I'm getting the Holy Ghost just saying this. The Holy Spirit just hit my life right now. Somebody needs to hear this. Listen, in the end, baby. Oh my God, in the end. You can step on me. You can spit on me. You can talk about me. You can talk about my image, baby. In the end, I'm still blessed. Put that down right now. Somebody is still blessed regardless. Oh my God. See, let me tell you something about happiness and about joy. Let me tell you about peace. When you got peace in your life, it doesn't matter what they got to say about you because you always had this internal peace. The internal peace was God. You kept God in your life. You're still blessed. Oh my God. It's powerful. Job was still blessed. Joseph was still blessed. And the amazing thing about that situation is that when Joseph's father died, the brothers thought that he would retaliate. Oh my God, I'm going to say that again. I don't got to retaliate against you because I'm still blessed. I was blessed when I was in a pit. Put that down there right now, chosen family. You've been blessed when you were in a pit. It didn't take God getting you out the pit to bless you. You were blessed from the womb. Oh my God, it's powerful. Oh, I'm still blessed. Wow, it's powerful. That's what the enemy don't understand. I don't care about the financial things. The financial things don't make me. Those are just rewards from God, and I'm thankful that God has given them to me. But when I was in a pit and nobody cared for me, nobody loved me, nobody reached out for me, family turned their back on me, friends turned their back on me, all I could reach out was for God. And one thing that came to my mind is I'm still blessed. See, when you can say I'm still blessed and be content in all things, God will give you more. God said this, when you can, when you can master being happy and being faithful over the little, God will make you ruler over many. Oh my God, God is going to increase somebody. That's according to Job. God's about to increase somebody's life. When you can be faithful over the little, God will make you ruler over many. See, it's the steps that you got to take to get to where you got to go. But understand something. You were blessed even when you were in the pit. Joseph was blessed even when he was in the pit. It didn't matter. Joseph coming out of the pit showed even more pleasing in God's eyesight, just showing just how Joseph was. And it's proof on why God chose Joseph over all his brothers. None of Joseph's brothers could be like, jo could be like Joseph. No, none of Joseph's brothers can love like Joseph. None of Joseph's brothers can get thrown down in a pit. And when the time came of, of, um, 
when a time came of pestilence and famine, none of them would have fed their other brothers. Why? Because it was Joseph's heart. And I want you to know something today, Joseph family, that your heart, according to Matthew 5, 8, is so pure. Amen. To where you see God through every situation. Some people only see God when they're getting blessed. Some people only praise God when they're getting blessings. But somehow you got a heart of gold, a heart of treasure where you can thank God even through the tough times, even through the rough times, even through the times where it don't look right. You still thank God. And when you can do those things and thank God and do the amazing things and give God glory, God will continue to bless you on top of blessings. Because something that happened with Joseph is at the end of time, God tested Joseph to see. If Joseph's trials made him bitter or better. And Joseph passed the test by feeding his brothers. Oh, my goodness gracious. I'm going to say it again. You want to know why Joseph fed his brothers? Well, let me tell you something right now, because Joseph's heart was always good. Joseph was never like them. Chosen family, you are not like them. You are not like the people who want to oppress you, who want you to fail in life, who want you to fall off, who want you to die. You are nothing like them. By the time you get to walking in your purpose, you're going to be able to help people out. You're going to be able to encourage people. You're going to love people. Whatever your purpose is, we all got different purposes in this world. But whatever your purpose is, you're going to see the beauty in your purpose. You're going to see the beauty in your life. People are going to celebrate you. They're going to see the goodness of God in your life. Oh, my God, it's powerful. How could this God continue to uplift people when thousands of people wanted to see him fall? It's because it's the God in me that refused to let my heart Go cold. Because if my heart went cold, I wouldn't love and support people. If my heart went cold, I wouldn't uplift people. If my heart went cold, I would throw people out. If my heart went cold, I will kick people out. But I refuse to do that to people because God was always inside of me. That's according to John 4, 4. See, when you know who you are and you're confident about yourself and you're confident on how God created you, there is nobody that can destroy your confidence. That's why they hate you. They hate the fact that they can't steal that confidence out of your life. Some people are angry. Listen, they're not necessarily angry with you as a person, but some people envy that confidence. How could he speak so well? How could he speak so confident in God? Because I know what God has took me through, what he brought me from, how he lifted me up out my situation. That's why I'm confident in God. It's called confidence. That's why we walk with confidence. See, when you've been through something in life, you can resonate with people who've been through something. When you've been through uh, situations when you've been through divorce, when you've been through family problems, when you've been through court, when you've been through prison, when you've been through family stumping on you, when you've been through smear campaigns, when you've been through people saying you're going to fail, when you've been through all of those things. All right. God was the one who took you out. Amen. So there's nobody that can confuse who was the source, because let me tell you something what God would do. God will put you there. Without a hand to reach out. Oh my God, this is powerful. Oh, that's powerful. I'm going to say it again. God will put you by yourself. He'll remove everybody out your path without nobody there to reach out and say, let me lift you up. You want to know why he'll do that? He's going to do that just to show you that he's God and he's God alone. Come on, let me get an amen. Some people's questioning God. God, why are you taking this person out? God, why are you removing this person? God, why are you taking this person out of my life? God is removing everybody to show you that he's God and he's God alone. Oh my God, and you're going to see God move you out the situation by yourself. It's going to be you and God against them. If it's you and God against the world, hit that like button right now. Oh, how many of you only had God against thousands of people outnumbered? The numbers would stack against you. Oh my God. How many of you, listen, how many of you did God step into battle with you? And listen, listen, God did this for you. Oh my goodness gracious. God beat the odds and he got even. Oh my God, it's powerful. See, it's the purpose of understanding this. When you think about David on the battlefield against Goliath and as David walked to the soldiers of Jerusalem, of Israel, and he talked to him and spoke with him. What prize would a man get if he slaughter this Goliath, this Philistine? And as they looked at David, David's own brother looked at David's confidence and tried to destroy his confidence. David under, I mean, David's brother underestimated who David 
really was. And as David walked up there, David said it with confidence that I stand for the God of Israel. David said it with confidence that I would destroy this Goliath. That's why they're upset with you. You're so confident that you're going to destroy every Goliath that's in your life. Why? Because God, because David knew as long as God was with him on a battlefield. Oh my goodness gracious. See the people in your life, they didn't know. All right. They don't listen. The people that David spoke to the army. Okay. Uh, David's brother. They didn't know that David was being prepared. Amen. David was being prepared when he was fighting the lions and the bears. Let me get amen. The preparation of the battles that you're fighting is preparing you for your Goliath. The preparation, the smear campaigns, the people that slander your name is preparing you for your Goliath. My preparation has prepared me for my Goliath. I got, listen, let me tell you something right now. Let me tell you the truth. The truth is this. Before I started this ministry, people slandered my name. Glory be to God. I'm going to say that again. The truth is people slandered my name in the music and movies before I started this ministry. God was preparing me for my Goliath. So guess what happened when people start seeing a bit of progress into this ministry? They smeared my name. Let me get an amen. But I was prepared. Why was I prepared? Why was I prepared for the battle? Because God prepared me before the ministry. The preparation, the steps in life is going to prepare you for your Goliath. What you're going through right now is going to prepare you for the biggest battle in your life. Once you beat that Goliath, it's another Goliath that you got to defeat. Every level requires a new devil. You got to fight every devil the higher that you go. Come on. Come on. Yes. Come on now. Come on, chosen family. Listen, uh, Renaissance Affair said this. Bless you always, a.k.a. Sister Stephanie. Sister Stephanie, I love you so much. Thank you so much for pouring in the ministry. God bless you. That's what I want you to know. It's preparing you for your good life. And I want you to understand something, that everything that you're enduring is going to put you higher and higher in life. Why do you think when you're looking at your life right now, the things that used to phase you, the things that, that used to make you stumble, you no longer stumble anymore. The things that used to make you fall, you no longer fall off those things anymore because God has built you up. God has made you stronger. Put down, I'm stronger. Somebody is stronger right now. Oh yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I'm gonna say it again. God has made you stronger. Yes, yes. See, see, though the first battle that you went through might've knocked you down. Amen. You got back up. So the same strength that came towards you, it can't knock you down no more. Though the lies might have tricked you, though they might have tricked you with some lies in the beginning, they can't trick you no more. Come on now. Tell the devil I'm stronger. And you're stronger. Why? Because your relationship with God is stronger. Amen. Your personal relationship with God is stronger. Once you get your relationship down packed with God, there is no enemy on this world that can weaken you. I told you this before, chosen family. God will show you signs on your way up. You got to pay attention to the signs from God. God was showing me signs on my way up. And I paid attention to them. I knew there was preparation. And now that I'm here, I'm teaching you, chosen family, that everything is a preparation. You got to look at your gifts. You got to look at the signs, even through the bad times, that God is showing you. Let me give you an example. Listen, like I told you, God allowed me to get smeared by people who tried to destroy my reputation, laugh at my name. And when I got into this ministry, there was people that tried to do smear campaigns across my name to change people's minds about me. But glory be to God that the spirit on people ignored what those enemies was trying to do and smear me and damage my reputation. But God also, but, but God also showed me something else. Before I started this ministry, as I was working on my music and movies, God showed me that there was people who didn't speak the same language as me. There was people in different states and different countries who can resonate with their brother. God bless you, uh, Butterfly J. Thank you for pouring in the ministry. There was people who didn't speak the same language as me. There was people who was overseas who was um, accepting my music, who was accepting me as an artist. God was giving me signs of what he was going to do with my life. God was giving me signs that he was going to make me global. Oh my goodness gracious, y'all got to hear me right now. It was the personality that God was working on. It was the process that God was working on for this ministry. 
So how do I know this? What's confirmation? Because when I got in, when I got into this ministry, I began to see people from the UK. I began to see people from Germany. I began to see people from South Africa. I began to see people from uh, Jamaica. I began to see people from the islands. I began to see people from India. I began to see people all across the world, all throughout the states of America. I began to see people all around the world and said, God, I knew it. God said, that's what I was showing you. God said, that's what I was showing you. He said, the family that didn't in Canada, shout out to you. Come on now. God said this. God said this. He said this. Listen, he said this. He said, you wanted people to accept you as family, but I had something bigger for you. Oh, my goodness gracious. That's powerful. He said, you were looking in a small place. What I have for you is across the world. I said, God, how are you going to do it? God said, don't worry. I'm going to work upon the spirit of man and woman to bless you. Oh my God, that's powerful. Thank you, chosen family. Thank you, chosen family. I said, God, how are you going to do it? The odds are stacked against me. God said, trust me, have faith in me, have faith, keep your faith. And I kept my faith and God worked things out. And the purpose of me telling you this is through the process, God was showing me that my connection, my personality with people was international. God said this, I will make you connect with people who's out of country. Why would they connect with you? Because according to Matthew 5, 8, the heart. How do I know it's Matthew 5, 8? Because it says a pure heart sees God. God said this too, it's warning to you, Crystal Life Coach, as you get into this ministry, there's going to be people who don't have a pure heart. God told me this. He said, listen, he said, you're going to have people that have a pure heart. Those are going to be the people who's assigned to you, who resonate with you because they're going to see the God in you. But also there's going to be enemies who don't have a pure heart, who's going to be unhappy. They're going to be frustrated. They're going to be upset. They're going to be mad because you're exposing truth. Beware of them. But teach anyway. Put down in the comment section below. I'm going to teach anyway. Put that down there right now, chosen family. Oh, I don't care. If the devil want to lie, I'm going to teach anyway. I was instructed by God to do it. Amen. Those who don't resonate with me, I still love you. I'm praying for you, but I'm on a mission. Put down, I'm on a mission. Put that down there, chosen family. I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission from God. Amen. See, in order to understand this and not get in your feelings about it, you got to know that everybody is not assigned to you. That's something that my father told me as well. My father said this. He said, listen, he said, wherever God is, that's where the devil showed up. Amen. He said, I was listening to your message, son. And when you preached up on uh, Job, when you preached up on Job and you said that before Job got tested and when you said that the angel showed up, Satan showed up as well. Oh, my God, that's powerful. My dad said that I taught him something in that scripture right there. He said when you broke that down and you said that he said that's what's happening in your ministry right now. He said when God's word come out, the enemy come out as well. And that's what I want you to understand, chosen family. That's why we have people who's upset on this channel. Because understand, anytime God's word come out, the devil come as well. Let me get an amen. Let me get a where. Let me get an amen. Come on now. Come on now. That's why. That's why it's people on here um, trying to assassinate your character as well. Because wherever God goes, the devil follows. But understand this, that... I'm assigned to the people of truth. Amen. Amen. And I'm praying for the people who's lost. I'm praying that you see your way as well. But regardless of the fact of the matter, as long as you can get God's word. All right. It's all on you. All right. Amen. I still love you. Oh, my God. What a powerful word. Chosen family, I'm going to leave you with this. No weapon formed against you will prosper. That's according to Isaiah 54. Let's go there. Let's go there. Let's go there. Oh, my goodness gracious. This is powerful. Let's go there, chosen family. Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54. Let's go there. Isaiah 54, 17. It says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that rise against thee in judgment, thou shall condemn. Let me give you the power. Put down. I got the power. Put that down there before we go. chosen. This is powerful. Put down. I got the power. Oh, my goodness gracious. I'm going to say that again. God has just given you the authority to condemn 
every evil tongue. God has just transferred the power to you. Oh my God, thank you God for giving me the power. What does this mean? It means that word curses and word spells lies over your life. You got the power to condemn every evil tongue in your life. You got the power. If they say you're a nobody, tell the devil you're a liar, I'm a somebody. Come on now, stand up for yourself. I know, listen, listen, some people are weakened. Some people are weakened in the battle. But I'm here to tell you right now that God's word is strength. Amen. God's word to lift your, lift your uh, spirit up. God's word to take you out the slums. God's word to make you powerful, baby. When you can say, I'm not, though I might not have a lot. Though I might not be rich or have wealth. I'm still powerful. I'm still not what you say I am. I'm what God say I am. Let me get an amen. It's not what the enemy say you are. It's who you say you are. Oh my goodness gracious, I'm going to say it. It's not what they say you are. It's not who they say you are. It's what God says you are. It's who you say you are. You got the power to condemn every evil tongue. Nobody can speak against you now in your life and condemn you. Amen? What does that mean? Witches, warlocks, word spells. Don't allow those things to linger over your life. Rebuke them in your mind. Rebuke them in your head. Amen. Rebuke, 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 because you have the power and the authority over all serpents as well. And that's what I want you to know, chosen family. Oh, my God, it's powerful. So what does this mean? It says there's no weapon that is formed against uh, the shall prosper in every evil tongue that shall rise against the member. The evil tongue is speaking. The evil tongue is slander. The evil tongue is smear campaigns. The evil tongue is saying you're a loser. The evil tongue is saying you're a nobody. The evil tongue is saying you're going to fall off. The evil tongue is saying you're going nowhere. Uh, you're, you're not going anywhere. The evil tongue is family speaking against you. You got the power to condemn and rebuke every evil tongue. Use your authority. Put down, I'm going to use my authority. Come on now. And that's what I want you to do. Use your authority according to Isaiah uh, 54, 17. Use your authority. Amen. Amen. That's what I want you to do. And with that said, chosen family, I want you to walk on this road with confidence and strength and power and wisdom. I'm proud of you. Come on now. Let me get an amen. Let me get an amen. I'm proud of you, chosen family. Fight that good fight. Come on now. God is going to change your story. If your story in your past, all right, had evil things in there, repent to God. Amen. God is telling you, once you accept me, Christ is telling you, once you become new, I'm going to change that story. See, there's going to be some people that's going to be mad because God has ripped up the book of lies and has changed your story. They're going to be upset about that, but it doesn't matter how mad the enemy gets. It doesn't matter how upset the enemy gets. When God works on your life and change your story and deletes that smear campaign, when God uh, vindicates you, come on out, put down, I've been vindicated. Put that down right now. When God clears your name, amen. Some of you live, let me tell you this. Some of you have financially been damaged. Spiritually been damaged, emotionally been damaged. I tell people this all the time. Some people have the money, but they don't have peace. Some people have peace, but they don't have finances. I'm here to tell you this right now that I want you to look to God because God is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning. In the end. And one thing I know before we leave, the most high will never fail. Put that down right now. Put down, he will never fail. Put down, the most high will never fail. He'll never fail. Let me tell you something. It might not come when you want it. Help might not come when you want it. But God will always be there when you need him. Amen. Amen. He will never fail you. Oh my God. God bless you, Carlos. I'm going to say, listen, listen. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my God. How do I know this? Miracles. I got to tell this miracle before I get off of here. Oh my God. There was a time in my life where, oh, yes, the Holy Ghost just hit me. The enemy 
was attacking me at my job. And I'll never forget this. There was a time when my daughter almost passed away and I had to take time off from work and I had to drive an hour and 30 minutes away just to, just to get work. And I remember um, on that hour and 30 minute long drive, my kids were hungry and we needed money at the time. And um, like I said, I fell into a hard time because when my daughter had almost passed away, I had to take like two or three weeks or something like that off from work. So, um, you know, I, I wasn't working a lot. So now it was time for me to get back to work. But um, I remember something praying to God for over 40 minutes headed home. And I was telling God, God, please make a way. God, make a way out of no way. Make a way out of no way. My whole drive there. And um, I was saying, God, show me your miracles. Show me your powers. The whole drive there. And the very next day, I went to work and I ran into a lady who I haven't seen in five years. And the, the amazing thing about it was this. She looked at me and it was time for us to leave our shift. And she said, Chris, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing well. She said, how is your kids? She asked about my kids. And when she asked about my kids, I said, they're doing fine. She said, listen, Chris, she said, how is your kids doing? I said, well, you know, I said, they're doing fine. She said, listen, you don't got to be ashamed. She said, in my, in my uh, trunk right here, I have a bunch of groceries that I have that I'm going to give to you. She said, um, cause I go out and go to fundraisers and stuff like that and give to the needy. Right. So at 11 o'clock, 1130 at night, here I am. Here I am. A woman sent from God who I haven't seen in five years is giving me groceries out of her van at 1130 at night. And something that's so amazing about this is it wasn't money that God sent. It was groceries. That let me know that God, he don't always give you what you want. He'll give you what you need. And as I'm driving in the car, with my car full of groceries, I kept crying just as I am now. And I call up my wife. She said, what's wrong? I said, God just blessed us. She said, what's wrong? What's wrong? Because I couldn't speak. I said, God just blessed us. God did a miracle over our life. I said, and I come in the house and <laughs> it's so amazing because my son, I tell you, he's a, he's a, he's a, he got a personality just like his father. Um, I come in the house and I give my wife a hug and we're taking these groceries out at about almost one o'clock in the morning. Now that's how long it took me to get home. And um, the very next morning, my son, he walks downstairs and he says, mommy, are we rich? <laughs> <laughs> he says that to my wife and we start laughing and we said, no, nah, son, uh, you know, God bless us with groceries and stuff like that. But um, I say that to say this, that my son just seeing the groceries inside of the refrigerator made him question that. And that was a hard time that I faced in life. But God worked up on a spirit of this amazing woman, amen, to uh, actually help me out with groceries at that time. And um, just my son saying that, it just really touched my heart and everything like that. And um, yeah, that was an amazing story. So why do I tell you this? I tell you this because God knows the needs of our life. Amen. And though I was praying for blessings and miracles, God knew exactly what miracle to send in my life. And I'm here to tell you right now that there, I knew it was nothing but God because at 1130 at night, God had those groceries available. So my, uh, so my kids can be fed. Amen. Come on now. See, it wasn't about me. It was about the children. Amen. Come on now, y'all. That's powerful. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> I see you, Shabai. Yeah, that was my son. He has a sense of humor just like his father. It's, it's amazing. I actually, um, uh, he's, uh, he's seven years old. So when, um, I caught him one time, he was, um, actually at the setup. He wanted to be just like his father. He was actually, um, sitting and I had my Bible open and, um, he likes to record little videos or whatever like that. And he, he wasn't reading the Bible, but he was imitating what his father was doing. Oh my goodness gracious. Let me get an amen. 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 See, it's how you raise your kids up. Amen. If you raise them up in the Lord, they'll come up in God. Come on now. Let me get an amen. See, and when I saw that, I said, son, I said, you better be ready when I call you. Amen. Come on. <laughs> Glory be to God. 
All right, y'all. Thank you so much for um, uh, tuning into this channel and to this ministry. I appreciate you taking the time. The reason I give you these uh, miracles and stuff, because there's much more many things that God has worked out real miracles in my life. But I had to give you that real life si uh, situation to let you know that all things are possible. OK, all things are possible when you call on God, cry out to God, be sincere with God. And I'm telling you right now, God will never forsake you. Amen. That's according to Psalms. God will never forsake you. That's why I don't care. The enemy can get on here, talk about me, say what they like. I don't care about none of that because I'm here for you, chosen family. I'm here to let you know that God will never forsake you. You are never alone. Oh, my God. I'm going to say it again. You are never alone. All right. Call on God. Reach out to God. Listen, when you're connected to God, the, the amazing thing about you being connected to the most high God is you can call out and reach out. Call God's name. Reach out. Call his name and he will answer that call. Come on now. Let me get amen. And, and I know that you have amazing stories here as well, chosen family, amazing testimonies as well. And trust me, I know. I know. <clears throat> and I respect you. I love you. All right. And just know that God is always listen, no matter what it look like. Amen. Listen, our life can be in shambles right now. No matter what it looks like, all things are working for the good. All right. The greater good, the greater purpose that God got for you. Amen. All righty. Thank you, chosen family. Thank you so much. Y'all have a blessed one. Glory be to God. Thank you, chosen family. Listen, 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 listen. Y'all know we got to finish this off here. Come on now. Come on now. Oh, let's go. There we go. Yes. Glory be to God. Thank you, chosen family, for all your love and support. Glory be to God. Yes. Get ready for the miracles, chosen family. The smear campaigns didn't work. Thank you. Peace in Christ. God bless you. It didn't work, y'all. Come on now. God bless you, Assign. Amen. I appreciate you, Siobhan. Thank you for all the love and support. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, everybody that's on this chat, all my chosen family. Thank you so much. Yes, all praises, all praises to the most high. Amen. Amen. All praises to the most high. Y'all stay blessed. May the Heavenly Father continue to bless and protect. God bless you, Tammy. God bless you teaching. Uh, 777. God bless everybody that's in this chat. I appreciate all the love and support from everybody around the way. God bless the chosen family. Thank you, chosen ones. Thank you so much. God bless you, Ski Mask. Uh, Blaze, God bless you, Allen. Glory be to God. Thank you, Linda. Glory be to God. Thank you, Speedy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, y'all. Peace, love, and blessings.